What is going on friends? Today I'm going to be sharing with you how to fake a long exposure here in Photoshop. So let's get into it. What's going on guys? My name's Brendan from Outbound Media and you can find me on Instagram at Burnwells. Before I get started, I just wanted to let anyone who's new here know that I make new Photoshop tutorials every single Wednesday. So if that's something you'd be into, make sure to hit that subscribe button. So today I'm going to be sharing with you how to fake a long exposure here in Photoshop. So if you're wanting to follow along with this tutorial, I have included a download link down in the description below with a couple of images that you guys can work on and use this exact same technique. So the image that I'm going to be using today is this image right here. It is a stock photo that I got from unsplash.com. So what we want to do, I want to make these clouds look like they're super blurred as if it was a super windy day and this is a very long exposure, say, say a minute, maybe two minutes long. I want the clouds to blur straight out to the camera and sort of center around this rock, which is our subject in this image. So the technique I'm showing you today will only allow you to blur clouds in your image. It will not help you to blur water and things like that. So in the case of this image, this person must have used an ND and so they, they could get a little bit of blur in the water. So moving on, what we want to do is we want to separate our sky from our foreground and this rock. So if you guys have been following along on my channel for a little while now, you probably have heard me talk about a bunch of different ways to cut things out in Photoshop and I actually have a tutorial that I talked all about that which I will link down below. But in this case, since it's a nice clear horizon, we can just use our quick selection tool. So I'm just going to grab my quick selection tool and I'm just going to drag out just like this. So as you see, it sort of didn't quite select everything I wanted. So all I'm going to do is just zoom in and sort of touch up those areas. So remember, if you want to make any adjustments, you can hold the alt button and you can get rid of any selections. So I'm just going to go through, now I'm holding the alt to get rid of this selection, so now it just goes level across my horizon. Almost there. Perfect. So now if I just double check around, it looks like it has gotten everything, goes clean across my horizon, everything looks splendid. So I'm going to just zoom back out, now I can add this selection to a layer mask by clicking my layer mask icon. Now as you see, I just have my sky. So I also want to have my foreground, so I'm now just going to press Command J to duplicate that layer. Then I'll press Command I to invert that layer, and now I have them totally separated. So you might see a little, there's a little bit of gap here now, but that's not to worry because we are going to be blurring the sky and it will fill itself in no problem. Now that we have our sky and our foreground separated, let's just rename these quickly so we don't lose track of them. So I'm just going to rename this to foreground and sky. So the blur effect that we're going to be using today for our clouds is called a radial blur. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to go up to my filter, now I'm going to go to blur, and then find radial blur. I'll click that and then this little box will come up. Essentially you have two different options here, you have the spin or the zoom. So in this case we want our clouds to blur sort of like these lines here, so I'm going to pick zoom. The amount is totally up to you, but I don't want to go too crazy, but I don't want to go too little. So you can experiment with this number, but for me, I'm just going to stick right around 20. Now I'm just going to click OK and wait for it to do its magic. Now as you see, we have blurred our sky and it sort of looks like sort of looks like a cool long exposure image here. So obviously we're going to have to just touch up this little bit around here. So first thing that we can do is we can extend our sky just a little and bring it down just like this. So we want to keep the horizon just about where it was because it's a little bit darker down on the horizon so we don't want to go way down here because then it doesn't quite look right. But I'm going to try to line it up the best I can to where it was in the original. Press enter and now it's looking pretty good. So what we can do, we can click on our layer mask icon and then with our brush tool we can just paint over white onto our layer mask. So make sure that white is selected, make sure your opacity and flow is at 100%. And now I'm just going to go in and paint in those areas that were transparent. So now you're probably like, what the heck did you just do? You made it worse. Let me just show you. So basically what we have done is we filled in that bit of the blur with the rock. But we can now use our clone stamp tool by pressing S. And we'll just make sure we're using a nice soft brush. And I'm just going to sample right near the rock. And I'm just going to paint over like this. 
And now all I'm doing is just getting rid of that rock, that rock blur and just replacing it with surrounding sky, just like this. Awesome, so that looks pretty good to me. So what you want to do once you finish, once you think you have finished, you just want to zoom in and take a glance around. So as, as you see, there's a little bit in here that I guess I didn't fill in. So all I have to do is just do the same thing again. So click on my layer mask, get my brush tool, fill it in with white, just like this. And voila. Now again, I'll just go with my clone stamp tool and paint in and clone stamp out some of the areas that I missed. Now just taking a glance around the image a little bit more, everything looks a-okay. Cool, so now we can zoom out and now we can see our final image. So here is the before and after of our fake long exposure that we just created 100% in Photoshop. So what we went over in this tutorial is how to separate our sky from our foreground in this case, we just use our quick selection tool, but you could also use the pen tool or channels. From there, we learned how to add a radial blur into our image and then position it just right so it looks realistic and then fill in any of the areas that didn't quite make sense. So in this case, the blur of the rock. Anyways, that is all I have for you guys for this tutorial. If you learned something from this tutorial today, I would love if you hit that like button and maybe even consider subscribing. I make new Photoshop tutorials every single Wednesday. If you use this technique in any of your images, I'd love to see them, so make sure to tag me at burnwills if you upload them to Instagram. If you want to see more of my work, make sure to find me on Instagram at burnwills, or you can also visit my website at outboundmedia.net. This is how to create a fake long exposure using Photoshop. Again, my name is Brendan from Outbound Media, and I hope to see you back here next Wednesday for another new Photoshop tutorial. See you then.